Well, thank you very much to the youth for this kind invitation to give me the to, to give me the opportunity to talk about machine learning and artificial intelligence in liver surgery. Um, basically, um, we're gonna go. We're gonna start with the basics. Um, from a point of view, I think we are now in the fourth era or in our in a fourth industrial revolution. We recently had the third one in the 60s or the 70s with automatic prediction, electronic computers. But now we have quickly overpassed it, and and we are I think we are now in the fourth industrial revolution with artificial intelligence, big data, robotics, and much more to come. Uh, we should understand deep learning, neural networks, and machine learning all inside this Russian doll, a concept of artificial intelligence, which is further divided in three types of intelligence uh, of artificial intelligence. We are now in artificial narrow intelligence, which is in type, which is also called weak into artificial intelligence, and we have not yet arrived for our, to artificial general intelligence in which the robots may be capable of doing the same things as, as humans do, or super intelligent, which is also called strong artificial intelligence, which their capacity will overpass human one. Well, there's a timeline defined for maybe tasks that machines will perform, and it's very unlikely that very complex ones, like, for example, writing, a, as you see in the slide, a New York Times bestseller on talking face to face, it's very unlikely that they will happen even with the 6G. Uh, maybe eventually after a 7G uh, will be a moment in which we will walk towards a fully digital and connected world. But um, what is so far known of, or what has been what has been the, the work done in artificial intelligence and liver surgery? Well, let me start with a non-liver related manuscript in which was published in Nature last year, in which more than 100 mammograms from women from UK and US uh, were, uh, were, were put in an artificial intelligence system and they were compared with the with diagnosis of six expert radiologists. And as you can see in the slide, the rate of false positive and false negatives dramatically dropped in up to a 10% in the US population, uh, meaning that definitely uh, uh, the, the interpretation of mammography, both mammograms, but was, was much better by artificial intelligence than by ourselves. Our team has been working for more than a decade in machine learning and artificial intelligence for donor recipient matching, and after five papers, the last one published in Plus One, we have been able to identify that to we have been able to 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 state that artificial neural networks predict uh, with much more accuracy uh, donor uh, the recipient outcomes and improve donor recipient matching compared to other well-known scores as Mel, DML, Soft, Dear. DRI or BARS current systems. This is an interesting manuscript from the Chinese team in which machine learning was used for to, to combine with clinical, with clinical um, features to create a rhodomic profile. Let me show you. Uh, they included more than 400 patients and in, in the machine, in, in the artificial intelligence system, uh, semantic features, clinical pathological features, and radiomics. And I would like to remark that radiomic features included more than 3,000 radiomic characteristics per tumor were included in a machine learning database. And the authors state that they, per, they created a radiomic uh, model to predict tumor recurrence with an individualized patient report with a risk strata for recurrence. But for me, the artificial intelligence in healthcare is linked to the big data. Let me show you that this slide is amazing. The growth of healthcare data year by year in, in, in the year 2013 was about 153 exabytes. In 2020, it's estimated to have overpassed 2,000 exabytes. Let me, let me with a 50% increase annually on the amount of data in healthcare. This number, I just put the, the, the figure. It's, it's really amazing. I think it's really difficult for us for, for us to understand the, these numbers. But definitely, I think that big, health, big, big data in healthcare combined with artificial intelligence is going to change everything. If we are able to put all our data and combine them in an altruistic way, we will definitely change the way we are doing medicine. Let me show you a couple of, of, of papers recently published which have used big data. This one is a, is, a, is a big data-based identification of multi-gene prognosis signature in liver cancer. And the authors just use three available databases, core, MINC, bio, and TCGA, and they made you know, um, gene combinations, and they could identify a huge amount of genes which combine 
may may predict uh, may predict poor outcomes in in HCC. Uh, Dan Hashimoto, in a in a review paper, they, he's, he, I think he really he really hit it because he said that individual patient data analysis may come to a population data analysis, and I really like this expression, and we will move to a collective surgical consciousness. And as I said, if we are capable of putting all our data in an altruistic way, we will definitely have a huge amount of big data which with, with artificial intelligence, we will be able to, to, to work with them. This something similar has happened, has been published in Head and Neck Surgery, in which a, a, a group of, of researchers have identified, uh, have, have just created a multi-atomic database and have collected data from 1,000 pa pa patients and have collected clinical data, transcriptomic data, and radiomics data, and all together probably will be, will very likely change the way that head and neck tumors are, are, are managed. Um, let's move to a different area. Let's move to artificial intelligence in the healthcare market. So I just want to see, I want to show you the repercussion of artificial intelligence now in, in, in healthcare in, in the in, in worldwide. I think that global artificial intelligence in healthcare market is going to change also everything. We'll change the preliminary diagnosis, uh, clinical trials, dosage reduction, maybe the, maybe we'll have virtual nursing assistance, robot surgery. But this figure is absolutely astonishing. You see, in the year 2019, the, 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 the market was estimated to be about 4,000 US dollar millions in artificial intelligence in healthcare, but probably in seven years, it's very likely to overpass 100,000 million dollars. So if you want to invest in something, maybe artificial intelligence in healthcare market is a good invest investment. Um, but only, not only investment, but I, I'd like to show you this. Um, if you go to internet, it's very funny because there is uh, uh, there are web pages talking about the war war to be the first one in artificial intelligence. And if you see the number of citations between China and United States on manuscripts working on artificial intelligence is really growing up. This is the investment. This is the the total artificial intelligence private investment in the last five years. But if you see this year, 2020, has been the first year in which China has overpassed United States in the number of published artificial intelligence journal papers and the number of artificial intelligence journal citations. So I think this is true. There is real, uh, there's really a war. Uh, uh, on the on the on the development of artificial intelligence in healthcare, and this is this is I really like this figure because um, we are going to talk about artificial intelligence and the pandemic. You see, in green, you had the manuscripts published on coronavirus. Uh, in red, manuscript talking about COVID, and in blue, manuscripts talking about pandemics. As you see, when COVID pandemic uh, pandemic was declared. This number of papers just, well, you know that it really increased. But this is funny. These are the number of manuscripts talking about artificial intelligence, machine learning, and deep learning methods. And with the pandemics, also the, the, the publication was raised exponentially. So I think that really artificial intelligence has been, uh, has been a, great dis uh, a great discovery as a very useful tool for the control of pandemics or, 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 or related to COVID-19. Well, what's the future, or, or, or what I like to say, the near future? Uh, I'm not going to talk a, lo a lot about these these two papers because I think that Patrick is going to give you a better overview. Patrick Pesso uh, later on is going to give you a better overview than myself. But I think that artificial intelligence is going to work together with augmented uh, virtual reality, and these two papers have been published recently, talking about uh, the use of, of of artificial intelligence. And, and augmented reality for the obtenance of the critical view of safety in laparoscopic cystectomy. Um, but I think this, this manuscript also has hit uh, what we, how we are going to go, going to work in liver surgery. And I think that definitely when we have a city, we are going to go now further to 3D models, to virtual reality, to, of course, the use of ICG and, 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 and the, the observation of the tumors and the fluorescence. Because the main aim is to do a precise hepatectomy. Uh, I think that artificial intelligence, all everything that we have been talking about, artificial intelligence and big data, the main aim is to achieve a precise hepatectomy. And I really, I really like to stop just, just a couple of minutes in here. 
it's very likely that when we have an hepatic mass, I don't think it's going to take a, lo a lot of time if we are if we're intelligent enough, if, if scientific societies work together to collect big data for the purpose or for the benefit of our patients. But when we have a patient, we will very likely put that patient in a big data database, and which will be trained by artificial intelligence. And it's very likely that the system, the program, may give us a proper classification, a proper efficacy and safety assessment, and the prognosis and prediction for to, to make a precise hepatic surgery medicine. And probably, I think, we will, we will move from this picture, which was the past in which the surgeon was the center of everything, to a future in which the surgeon will, will, will have a huge amount of data and will be assisted by machines, which by artificial intelligence tools will guide us through the best manage management of our patient. For example, look at this, look at this uh, video of how some neurosurgeons are working in the spine cord uh, I think that it's very, very, very likely that we are moving towards this field um, with the assistance of, of, of virtual reality and by having previously used artificial intelligence to find out the best uh, treatment and, and the best option for our patients. Maybe this is something that worries us is the, te the technological singularities and hypoth hypothetical future event where computer intelligence will surpass and exceed that of human intelligence with profound consequences for society. Honestly, in that moment, it's very likely that untrained robots may turn into trained robots, but honestly, I though do not really think that that's the future. I think that automation is very unlikely to be not the, no, of course, not the near future. Maybe it will take a huge amount of time. But I think that human augmentation and human assistance by robot is is the future. So, what are my conclusions? Well, um, we have talked about artificial intelligence and machine learning. I really love this slide, Be, but we have to remember that this is just to to, to very tiny drops of the future because we have big data, precision health and data health with these huge amount of tools like nanobots, virtual reality, wearable device, chips, exosome, you know, microbiome in which we, have, we all have to work together to put them all together in big data and try to bring uh, medicine to the next level. Because from my point of view, the clinical decision support to make a precision medicine is going to be based on advanced analytics and data aggregation in which they will be put on advanced computation analytics and digital and electronic health data all together in big data databases. Because just remember, think about it, that 15 years ago, it took 10 years and $2.7 billion to sequence the first genome. But now we can do that with less than $10,000 in a week. So that's quite fascinating. <laughs> Um, but we all just, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna just finish with this slide. We just have to remember that humans, we are humans. We have to know, we have to control the way we work with machines and not let them uh, control us. Well, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure for me to, to give this talk. Thank you.